We're well into 2021 and Apple has just brought out its first set of new products and services for the year. So let's talk about the new Apple TV, uh, the new iMacs together with the new iPad Pro. Hey, what up? It's your boy Mob Justice back again with another video. And for today, we are talking about the first set of new products and services that are being offered uh, by Apple for 2021. It was an event filled day on Tuesday as Apple had their spring loaded event, uh, bringing out a whole host of uh, products. So we're going to be giving some first impressions. We're going to go through some of the key product announcements and then just talk about what it all means in the Apple ecosystem. As always, this uh, video is brought to you by the team over at Lion Media. Uh, head on over to check out some of the crispiest uh, photo, video and audio content. That's www.lionmedia.com. Head on over, uh, check it out and just see uh, what the team can do for you. So overall, we saw a good set of product announcements coming through from the team in Cupertino. It is, uh, I think, the fourth or fifth event that we've seen in this particular manner because of COVID-19 they can't have the live events anymore and so we had another slick production uh, coming through from Apple. A lot of products were announced on the day uh, sort of keying into uh, the title for the event which was spring loaded and that alluded to a number of the announcements that they made around the different products. So a lot of good uh, products that were coming and it was properly loaded um, with uh, you know key things cinematic you know once again we keep talking about the production value that apple brings and they did not disappoint once again their transitions the cinematography um, the audio quality top notch once again and i was especially um, entertained by two particular aspects the first um, being the fact that we got to see Tim Cook uh, doing a lot more outside shots uh, compared to what we've seen in the past. And then we also saw that sort of Mission Impossible uh, type of sequence that they have um, along the way. Obviously, the whole thing doesn't make sense because if you're Tim Cook, you don't need to break into anything. You have access to the whole place, right? But just for the drama, it was great. As I said, that there were a number of different products that were announced on the day. And I'll start off with sort of the three, we'll call them the minor ones, and then we'll get into the major ones, uh, sort of in the order that Apple presented them themselves. Um, the first one uh, that came out, I think it's the one that had been touted for the longest, and that is the release of AirTags. And uh, this is a product that had been rumored for a really long time. They're basically little tiles you know about the size of a you know a coin or something like that and basically they can help you try to look for and identify lost items right you attach it to a bag to a backpack you know wallet keys whatever it is and if ever something like that goes missing or you can't find it you just go on your phone you go through the find my network and you're able to locate you know whatever it is is attached uh, i've seen a couple of demonstrations and it really looks like it's a solid uh, product that they have going on there and uh, i guess it adds to what's been going on in the market because you have uh, other products like tile uh, together with uh, uh, samsung's uh, tags that recently came out uh, where we saw samsung beating apple to the punch on that front but it's likely that apple's tags are going to uh, outperform the rest of the competition because of that network of ios devices that are working uh, passively and actively in the background to uh, locate where each one of those tags is the price for these tags is coming in at around 29 us dollars for one and then they have an offer where they're doing a four pack uh, that's coming in at 99 dollars and it's likely that people are going to be buying these um, in that four pack so you know some clever you know sort of marketing and product placement coming through from apple the second announcement that apple made was around the iphone it wasn't a new iphone it wasn't you know an extra variant or anything like that but rather a new color they've added a purple color to the iphone range making them six you know across the series and uh, it's not my particular flavor but for 
for you know a lot of you out there um it's something that apple will probably responded to and a lot of people are likely going to be buying this now in the past i've spoken quite at length uh, just around podcasting and podcasts so i was pleasantly surprised to see an update uh, to apple's podcasting platform and podcasting app uh, people will now have the option for you know premium content and that type of thing and they've redesigned the layout um, of the app on ios Apple is probably uh, the company that sort of credited with really bringing our podcasts to the fore um, because when they brought in iTunes back in 2003, uh, they were one of the first companies to really be serious about podcasts. So as a podcast fan, it was good to see that update. Moving on to the main announcements of the day, I'm going to start off with the Apple TV 4K. Uh, that is the product that I'm most interested in and most excited about. I've I've been an Apple TV user for a number of years now, 2014, uh, so 2014, 2015, somewhere there, right? And I've had the third generation box, sort of skipping the fourth generation one. So it's really good to see that they've done an update and I thought it was long overdue because we hadn't seen anything new since about 2017. So what's new with this one is the fact that the box itself is it's staying the same, but they've packed new internals uh, that also feature the new um, a12 bionic inside this so is going to be a faster snappier experience they're also touting better picture quality because of higher dynamic range uh, together with the higher refresh rates as well interestingly enough they have a new calibration feature uh, where you can basically use um, your iphone to calibrate uh, your screen you just put it up there and then it uses the camera on your iphone to calibrate picture settings and give you uh, the best experience on that front. The software itself doesn't look like it's changed uh, too much. We'll see uh, what the latest version of tvOS is going to be like and look like uh, because in the recent update, they did have all of the picture and picture and then they added, um, you know, Apple Fitness and all of that stuff. So we're going to see if there are going to be any improvements on that end. The thing that I'm also excited about is the new remote and uh, that's a new Siri remote and it looks like a combination of the first generation and sort of second generation remotes because there have been two main styles over the years and sort of it seems as if they've been meshed together and uh, it looks like they've got more buttons but at the same time still making use of touch interfaces sort of hearkening back to the original iPod. So definitely interested um, in getting that in and I'm really keen on that. Moving on to what is perhaps the biggest overhaul that we saw um, this week and that is on the new iMac because the iMac has had the same design since about 2012. So it's good to see that Apple has finally refreshed and redesigned uh, their product from the ground up and it really looks like an impressive design. Uh, the, the hinge and sort of hearkening to the Pro Display XDR that we saw uh, with the Mac Pro and that sort of looks like the design language that they've carried forward for these new iMacs. I'm personally not a fan you know of the design because they really look good from the back they even have some new cool colors uh, that sort of harken to the original iMac and all the colors that that product was offered in they've got uh, the purples they've got blues they've got reds or pinks whatever you call that so it really looks like they've gone back to the drawing board and it was good to see my issue is on the front um, there have been some renders and I think that's where the issue came in. Uh, there had been some renders online and people had been expecting sort of an all glass uh, type of all screen sort of uh, display uh, that doesn't have anything else happening on the front. But we saw a big chin happening and that's where a lot of people have had issues. For me, it's okay. It's not really an issue. My issue is with the two toneness of the front because you've got the white sort of gray border around around it because with the old iMacs they had a black border around them and I think they could have done that a bit 
better because it really just looks like someone went and stuck an iPad to the front of that iMac and you know for me like I'm saying it's just not my cup of tea and honestly things like that make me think a little bit like who approves these designs but at the end of the day Apple's known for their design so a group of educated men and women probably decided that you know it was good and it worked for them but for some of us no. Three things to say about the new iMac is that firstly, it looks like Apple has now rounded up its, uh, I'm going to call them entry level M1 Macs uh, because Apple has its new silicon now and now we've had the M1 chip being added to the Mac Mini, uh, to the MacBook Air, uh, to the 13 inch MacBook Pro, uh, the entry level one and then now we're also seeing it happening on the iMac, right? Uh, because this is replacing uh, the old 21 inch um, iMac, right? Not the 27 inch uh, that we would see. So basically this is this was the entry, it's replacing what would have been the entry level iMac. So it looks like that's what Apple has decided to do with the M1s. And hopefully as the year progresses, when we get to a 27 inch, um, a 27 inch replacement uh, for the iMac together with the 16 inch uh, MacBook Pros, etc. We'll probably see a new chip, maybe an M2, M1X, whatever they're going to be calling it. So that's it on that end. The second bit is that um, with this design, Apple has embraced USB-C once again. Uh, we first saw this with the MacBook Pros and now we see the iMac now coming in with uh, just uh, USB-C on the back. It looks like uh, that's what we're getting. There's still a headphone jack, uh, but it looks like they've gone over to a USB-C um, only setup. And then the last thing is the fact that Apple has brought out a new set of uh, magic trackpads together with magic keyboard that now feature touch id and that are going to be color matched together with the new imax undoubtedly the grand finale for apple this week was the new m1 based ipad pro now the ipad pro has been powerful and been blowing a number of different computer systems um, especially laptops out of the water with this performance but it's traditionally been thought to be held back by its software, especially when it was still running um, iOS. At least with the move to Mac OS, it's now becoming more and more uh, like a viable computer or laptop replacement. But, you know, going forward, we just hope that Apple does more and more uh, to increase the level of uh, productivity and professional uh, level apps that come to the platform, but at the same time taking advantage of all of that power. Now this new iPad Pro is powerful to say the least. You've now thrown an M1 in there, which I think is overkill, but it means that it's going to be performing on another level. And we saw um, a lot of testimonials being given by uh, people from LumaFusion together with Adobe um, hinting at what its ability is. Uh, so we really hope to see um, things going up on that end. The other things to just take note of is the fact that uh, the new iPad now features uh, the same type of display that we see uh, in the Pro Display XDR and they now have something that they call Liquid Retina XDR. Guys, Apple, I really don't understand who's coming up with these names. Uh, but anyway, they've also thrown in um, Thunderbolt inside there because you can really see that they're trying to uh, cater towards the creative professionals uh, because they now have uh, their highest storage option is a two terabyte um, version. Imagine that a two terabyte uh, storage option on an iPad and they were touting the fact that you can have about 60,000 um, raw files you know from a camera on that device really trying to show um, the market that they're trying to appeal to looking at the bigger picture all of the products announcements that we've just detailed point to three things uh, that I've noted the first one is that Apple is really signaling that they're still serious about hardware they're still serious about uh, the internals that they're having they're serious about their own chips and they're really serious about their design so you 
you know that's that the second bit on the chips is that uh, we're really seeing intel slowly being phased out um, of the mac lineup you know as we're seeing apple using more and more of its own chips and silicon in its machines so now we have apple you know more and more as a serious um, silicon contender and chip maker the last bit is the ecosystem we all know that apple's ecosystem is very important to them and out of all the products that were announced this week the air tags really look like they're the one product that's adding the most to the ecosystem because firstly it's a new product but most importantly it's a new product that's taking advantage of uh, existing apple products especially those um, that are ios based right so you have all of those products in the wild and they can help you to locate something wherever it is and that's probably going to go a long way in making the apple ecosystem even more attractive regarding the big picture when it comes to um, the m1 max like i said earlier on it looks like Apple has really rounded up its entry level set of Macs, uh, the Mac Mini, uh, the new iMac Pro on the smaller side, uh, together with their MacBook, uh, the MacBook Air and uh, the entry level MacBook Pro that looks to be where the m1 is going to be going forward we hope to see an m1x or m2 whatever it is and that's likely going to be on their higher end machines what remains to be seen now is when we're actually going to see an announcement or some showing off being made of the next set uh, of apple silicon based chips uh, because looking at history we saw the introduction of apple silicon as a concept at last year's uh, apple worldwide developers conference or wwdc and i suspect that we're likely going to see another announcement happening at wwdc this year in june um, probably they're going to show off uh, the next generation the one that's likely uh, to be seen in those high-end macs the big picture around uh, the iPad Pro, I think they're really trying to go after the creative professional market, optimizing the platform for that. And more than anything else, just looking at the features that they were touting on the day. What remains to be seen is what type of optimization they're going to make in iPad OS because people really want to see the pro level apps coming to the platform, right? They spoke a lot about LumaFusion and Adobe and that's great, but I know that people want to see things like Final Cut uh, Pro coming to the iPad. Once again, WWDC, uh, I think is where we're going to see some of these announcements being made because, you know, sort of priming the developer community about uh, the power and accessibility of the platform, right? I think that's where we're likely going to see the next generational evolution. They've set us up now with an M1 based uh, uh, iPad Pro. And then when we get to the developers conference, they then can show off uh, and probably announce uh, some partnerships that they have with app um, and software developers. So really uh, crossing our fingers on that one. So in conclusion, a really solid set of uh, product announcements coming through uh, from the team in Cupertino, California, uh, that's Apple. And I'm really excited, as I said personally, about getting my hands on the new Apple TV 4K and just playing around with that product. It will be good to see uh, what the performance is in real life uh, for the new iMacs in particular and what power uh, Apple will be able to unleash through its M1 based iPad Pro. As I said just now, I really think that we're going to see a lot of this power and capability being demonstrated uh, at WWDC as we see uh, the roadmap for, you know, for Apple, particularly whatever the evolution of the M1 is, whether we're going to call it an M1X or an M2, whatever it is, I really think we're going to see that happening at WWDC, or at least that's what we hope is going to happen. Otherwise, that's been it for this video. Let me know what you think. Um, are you going to be getting any of these new products, particularly the AirTags? I know that people were you know, quite excited to get their hands on these ones and it had been rumored for a really long time. What do you think of the, the IMAX design? Uh, what do you think of the M1 being in the iPad Pro? Are you a podcast user? What do you think of the uh, redesigned, um, you know, redesigned interface? 
coming up you know in the world of apple we will be getting uh, an update on ios uh, that should be ios 14.5 and i know that that one is going to be pretty big on the privacy side and we'll just be waiting to see you know how things go on that end otherwise for today thank you to everyone who's been watching and we'll catch you guys in the next video this is muffs too much and you're watching mob justice tv like us on facebook follow us on instagram follow us on twitter we're there on youtube thank you for watching our video subscribe Thank mm -hmm. you.